Okay, this is part three all about slow processes. You should learn each individual one and really be careful with the beginning to understand that super well. So what causes sheer stress and strength? You should be able to apply those to most mass movements and be able to identify all of them. So just a quick note then to begin with, the rocks and weathering course, um, you could see old past papers and there's quite a lot of old past paper questions. Um, so we have uh, slow processes development like rock structure, climate, vegetation, soil, gradient, aspect. Now we do learn about these, but they, t they took this off as an independent question. So it's good to know it, um, but you won't be asked to explain any of them in uh, great detail. Okay, so failure is caused two factors. You have shear stress. Shear stress is then the force per unit put onto the surface. This is the stress upon the rock um, to cause it to move or to change, right? So all slopes are in an equilibrium already and these things can change it. Um, so that is shear stress. Shear strength then is the resistance offered by material of deformation or sliding. Uh, shear strength. So that is the internal force or the cohesion that allows slopes to exist and uh, not to change majorly. And then you've got things like internal frictions with those. Mass movements then are when shear stress exceeds shear strength. Essentially, uh, if the downward sh force becomes greater than the resistance, right? The interior shear strength can also be decreased by certain movements as well, and this will cause any kind of materials to move down then. Okay, uh, contributing to shear strength, um, the reduction of shear strength. So we're talking about things that are a little bit more internal here. So weathering is gonna break down the slope and the strength from within. So we can see that from both physical and chemical weathering um, will tend to have these impacts on it. So things like freeze tall weathering, frost wedging mentioned there, um, chemical dissolution or the carbonation mentioned in the last unit. The change in pore water pressure, so the amount of water that's accumulated into it, um, so this can give a higher percentage of water. So let's say if it's soil or regolith. Regolith is between soil and bedrock, right? It's not pure rock, but it has a lot of large pieces of rock in it. And if that becomes waterlogged, for example, this would easily, more easily cause a landslide. A change in structure. So if we think about fault lines or tectonic plate movements, for example, um, a lot of those fault lines can then open up areas of weakness within uh, bedrock very, very deep and could potentially cause uh, a reduction in shear strength. Organic effects then, um, more like the physical, biological weathering, um, where we see like root action, for example, and this will uh, cause a reduction in the shear strength, but also removing vegetation can reduce the strength. It might have had cohesive forces, and this may have damaged then uh, its ability to hold itself upright. So then what adds shear stress to any slope? We have the lateral removing or undercutting. So this can be done often. Often we see it done by people when they've got uh, some sort of uh, roads to build or something through a sloped area, but often it is a natural process. So the natural process is at play. We go back to our uh, river section and so rivers eroding, waves, glaciers, wind, these can cause erosion along the side of a slope. So we have a slope here, you've got the waves coming in. And as the waves are eroding this area here, it might remove this piece here, for example, at the bottom of the slope. And this leaves the rest of it vulnerable to say slide down. So all these erosional forces that we study are definitely removing the lateral support there. Removal of underlying support, so that is the collapse of something underneath. Now, this might be the foundations that the slope is on. Uh, it's similar enough to the lateral support, but might be more vertical. And then we see the uh, loading of the slope as well. So this can be the slow growth of a tree. It could be the addition of uh, buildings, roads. Uh, often we can see it with snow and seasonal deposition of snow and this adds a huge amount of weight there as well. So heavy rain can saturate topsoil as well, causing a weight to increase too. Lateral pressure then can come from things like pressure release. Um, as we mentioned there, weathering can come in and cause shear stress as well as reduce the shear strength. And it can also develop uh, things like slip planes and faults during uh, times when it's had some maybe stress 
So transient stress offers that up. So transient stress or earthquakes, then uh, a lot of shaking and this causes it to vibrate and increases the stress on the slope's equilibrium. So we won't discuss these in terms of every mass movement, but it's really important to know them and think about them while we're talking about it. Any of these can be used to explain why the mass movement is happening, see which ones apply to uh, any particular mass movement. Okay, downwards can be opposed by friction, cohesive forces and vegetation. So soil binders there, high cohesion, maybe having clay, for example, can be very cohesive and stick things together. Okay, uh, we've got four different mass movements. And okay, guys, if you like, please subscribe and let me know if you have any questions and I'll be happy to answer them. I hope that helped. If you want to continue learning, the rest of the course is below in our link. Um, you can sign up and learn there through all these videos. There's over 10 hours of videos of the content. Um, and this teaches you everything about the case studies, the concepts in each section, and you can just take it at your own pace. Um, within each course, then you'll get a PDF printout, some short questions and a video.